Hey y'all, it's Ariane Belazier, your friendly neighborhood interior designer. And today I'm gonna tell you the backstory on one particular element in one of the rooms in my home that I get asked a ton of questions about. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that I have recently completed a huge whole house renovation for my family. We took a 25 year old outdated home and transformed it into a stylish yet livable space that has become our oasis for our family, especially during this pandemic. Believe it or not, one of the rooms I get the most questions about is my dining room and more specifically the art installation that you can see in this room when you enter my home. The funny thing is, this installation was actually a last minute design change. You can kind of call it our Hail Mary. We veered off of our original plan for designing that space because we were crunched for time and frankly money, and we had to get the entire house styled and accessorized in time for our scheduled photo and video shoot. So we already had some amazing partners on board for this room in our house. We had beautiful furniture pieces from Bernhardt. We had a gorgeous light fixture from Corbett Lighting. But I had to kind of forego my original vision of the space, which included bold wallpapers, extra trim detail, lots of color, and even some lighting and LED elements to kind of pull back and create a more subtle, less expensive design that was no less striking. Now, once I took those elements off of the table, the bold wallpaper, the extra trim molding, some of those details that would really help me create interest and three-dimensional qualities into the space while also filling in that large blank wall, I really was faced with a challenge. How do I create a room that's interesting without blowing the budget? Because at this point, I think my husband was really tired of writing checks. <laughs> Most art pieces aren't the right scale or size to do this alone. So my solution was to fill in the wall with original art. And I would create this art using a fabulous fabric and some frames. Now, before I could choose the fabric for this original art piece, I needed to know how much fabric I would need to create the impact that I wanted in the space. So my team and I went to work measuring the room to get all of our dimensions, understanding the length of the wall, the height of the wall, how much area we really needed to fill in. And then we looked at what ready-made, frame options would be available to us because we knew that our budget wouldn't allow for a custom frame and we didn't have the time in our schedule to wait for a custom made frame. Once we knew which frames were available to us and what sizes, we could quickly choose a few frames that looked like they had the effect we wanted, make sure that they had the stock that we wanted, and then create a few layout options based on the numbers of frames that it would take to cover the wall vertically and horizontally. Only then would we know how much fabric we needed to fill the number of frames that we selected for our chosen layout. Basically at this point we were doing a lot of math. Math. Who knew how much this subject would come in handy for me and my job. After doing all the math we settled on this layout for our wall art installation design. Then it was time to go shopping for our fabric. As I was at my local fabric store I stumbled upon this fabric and I instantly loved it because of its hand-drawn metallic quality. I also love that it sort of had this graffiti effect which ironically is the name of the Corbett lighting fixture we have in that room. It's called graffiti. Because I already knew how many frames we needed and the opening sizes of each frame, I knew when I saw this option that it really could work in my space because the store had enough on hand for me to take for that project. Once our frames arrived, we took the back off of one of the frames and placed it on the fabric as a template so that we could make sure that our cuts for each piece were precise and that we didn't have a lot of waste of our fabric. And then once we had all of our pieces cut and placed into their frames, this my friends is the end of the DIY portion of this programming. This is where my amazing art installer came in to help us take the project home. He installed all of the pieces much more quickly and precisely than I ever could. Because let's be honest, there is no way in the world that I, Ariane Belazir, could have hung and installed all of those frames the way that he did in the amount of time that he did. The key to good design is knowing your strengths 
knowing your weaknesses, and pulling in someone who can fill in the gaps. And this guy who installed our art filled in a big gap in a big way. So to recap, if you wanna create a similar wall installation in your home, just remember these three steps. First, math, it's your friend. As the old saying goes, measure twice and cut once. And that's never been more true than in a project like this. You need to have accurate measurements of your wall and the possible frames you'll use before you move to the next step of the process. Which brings us to tip number two, determine your layout. Now you've got your wall dimensions and your frame dimensions, and now you need to create at least a few layout options to see which one will achieve the look and impact you're really going for. You can create simple layout guides on paper or even using a computer program. The key is to make sure that you've done the math, properly spaced everything out, so that you have a visual, a plan, a compass on how to achieve this particular installation style. And finally, step number three, you need to know that precision is key. Once you've chosen the layout that works best for you, ordered your frames, and installed the fabric into each frame, now you're ready to actually put these babies up on the wall but it's not a haphazard process. So this is where I would recommend if there is an art installer or a handyman available in your area, you might wanna give them a call because they're gonna make this part of the process much easier for you to accomplish. That being said, if you wanna do it yourself, just make sure you bring lots of patience, grace for yourself and time to this project because you need to be able to install each piece strategically, making sure they're aligned, precise and level as you go. Now in this project, I use fabric, but you could certainly achieve the same look with wallpaper. The choice is yours. Just make sure that whatever you're designing your original wall art installation around is a piece that you love and that inspires you. I hope that our little pivot on this design project really inspires you to think outside of the box on your next decorating project. And I would love to hear from you. So let me know in the comments what do you think about our original art installation and whether it inspires you to do something differently on your walls. 